Hello, in this uh, session, we'll discuss uh, financial and non-financial measures. And we'll uh, delve into the concept of performance measurement systems. If uh, just to backtrack a little, if you remember, there are three types you know, of uh, control systems. Input, controls, throughput, controls, and output controls. Okay. Those are the three dimensions of management control. Input refers to motivation, hiring, right? Uh, it also refers to uh, human behavior and uh, other aspects related to forming managers or forming people within the organization, right? So that's why they are input. It refers to people. And how you select people, how you how you uh, educate them, what kind of what kind of background do you hire? So that's input controls. Three, throughput controls refers to processes, okay, and structures. So throughput controls, yan yung design of uh, the responsibility centers, for example, that's part of throughput controls. Putting in place. Procedures, for example, that's part of processes aspect of throughput controls. Okay. And the last type of control is output controls. And usually this refers to performance measurement or performance management. Okay, So we're now going to the last type of controls, which is output controls. Kasi kung ano man yung naging result, of the input and the throughput, you know, ultimately there is an output related to it. And that output needs to be measured, needs to be determined whether, whether it is in line with organizational objectives. And there we establish performance management or performance measurement systems in place so that we can, uh, we can have a view of whether uh, the output is in line with performance. With, with desired performance. Okay, so that's where we are in the whole uh, scheme of things with, re with respect to management control. So input, nandiyan yung organizational culture, motivation, okay, hiring procedures, you know, values of an organization. We discussed a lot of those things in previous lectures. So that's part of input controls. What kind of people do you want to bring into the organization? So that's what input controls are. Throughput controls refers to processes and structure. So designing the responsibility centers, uh, uh, designing the organizational structure, designing processes proceed, and, and other rules of engagement, that's part of throughput controls. So yung mga internal control rules, for example, or internal control procedures. For example, one internal control procedure is, uh, uh, for example, custody of assets incompatible transaction yan or incompatible role yan versus recording. You learn that in auditing, right? That process or that procedure when incorporated into the whole organization is part of throughput controls. Kasi it provides a, it provides a uh, parang bounds of when or how employees are supposed to act. So yun yung examples ng throughput controls. Now we're, we're, we're now delving into output controls. Okay. The budget is in between the two, the budgeting cycle. Okay. So when we talk about budgeting, it talks about the process of how to budget. So therefore, part yan ng throughput controls, right? And the output of the budget. And that output forms part of uh, output controls, the budget itself. The budget itself is a form of output control. Kasi yung budget, usually, performance is measured against the budget. And so therefore, the budgeting process, yung output ng budgeting process is an input to the out, to output controls. How you do the budget, that's part of throughput controls. right? So that's why budgeting encompasses the two. right? So now we focus ourselves or we focus the discussion on performance measurement systems, which are a component of output controls. Okay. 
So what are performance measurement systems? Okay. Essentially, this is a system of how to measure performance. There's a traditional adage that, that's usually said in organizations that what gets measured gets done. So the theory here is para, may mang, para yung objectives of the organization are attained, you must be able to measure performance against it. Kasi kung nami-measure mo raw ang performance na yan, managers would definitely uh, definitely uh, work towards the attainment of those goals. If you're able to measure it, then it gets done. No, Because merong monitoring na nangyayari. Okay, so that's one, one aspect uh, that needs to be considered or one aspect that is uh, sort of enabling na kailangan ng performance measurement systems. Dimension of performance are specified as measures okay, that quantify performance financially and or non-financially. So in a performance measurement system, dapat mag-define ka ng measures. Okay? Sometimes measures are called key performance indicators. Okay? So parang kailangan mong i-define kung ganito ang aking strategy, paano ko ba dapat i-measure ang performance so that I know that I am in line with strategy. Okay? So that, that's why I'm that's why defining the measure is very important in, uh, in performance measurement systems, of course. And there are two kinds of measures, financial measures and non-financial measures. Mm -hmm. okay? So these are critical types of measures. Mm -hmm. okay? Financial and non-financial measures are meaningful only if the outcome is compared with a valid target or sta standard. So mayroon kang measure, right? Yung measure na yan, merong actual results na mangyayari after i-implement ang strategy. Right? Para meaningful yung measure na yan na may actual results, dapat the company or the organization should be able to define targets or standards of good performance. Kailangan ma-define para paano, paano malalaman kung yung actual results okay ba? There should be a target in place. Okay? So performance measurement system is composed of defining the proper measures, setting the appropriate targets, okay? And number three, after setting the appropriate targets, measuring or monitoring results, okay? So that you can compare the outcome versus the target, okay? So that's what performance measurement is, okay? And similar to our previous discussion, yung measure, yung target, and how it is monitored is linked, okay, on the type of responsibility centers, okay? Type of, sorry. Type of responsibility centers. Kasi responsibility center yung structure by which accountability are defined in an organization. Accountabilities are defined in terms of measures or KPIs. Right? No, so nakakonect siya. Yung, yung structure of accountabilities is connected to the performance management system. Okay. So what are the goals of performance measurement systems? Okay. Number one, it helps managers and employees understand, implement, and refine the organization's goals and strategies. Uh, kasi maraming trabaho ang bawat manager. By setting up a perform performance management system, okay, na lalaman ng manager, ano ang pinakamahalaga? Ano ang mga mahalagang tasks? in an organization na kailangan niyang i-focus on. So it will decide which focus to which measures to focus on. No? So for example, you're a sales manager. Okay, if you're a sales manager, marami kang trabaho, right? No? Number one, 
uh, mag-sales call. Number two, pag nag-sales call ka, kumuha ng order. Number three, pag kumuha ng order, making sure that it is delivered. Right? Number four, pag na-deliver na, make sure that it is being invoiced or billed by the company. Number five, in some organizations, collection. Okay? Number six, of course, relationship management. Okay? Uh, what else? Number seven, uh, go-to-market strategies. So, pwede may mga promotions ka na local sa mga pinagbibentahan mong accounts. Okay? Number eight, so probably community engagement, right? Uh, and a lot of a lot of a lot more things. So these are a lot of activities. Each of those items could have measures or key performance indicators. Paano natin nalalaman na maganda ang trabaho mo with respect to ordering? Paano natin malalaman kung maganda ang trabaho mo with respect to billing and collection? Right? So yung mga bawat activities na yun, pwedeng lagyan ng measure. Okay. However, go performance measurement systems also define which are the more important ones in an organization. Kaya usually, may weights yan in a performance measurement system. So sabi nila, your performance is 30% yung benta. Na-exceed mo ba yung target na benta? Right? 30%. Then it guides individuals on which measures should he or she focus on. No? in the myriad of tasks that's important. Okay? So that's also one goal of performance measurement systems. And there are a lot of performance measures. There are financial and non-financial performance measures. So for example, if you're a sales manager, what are financial measures? So what are some financial measures right, that are related to, to this? Financial measures can be in the form of sales target. Sales target in pesos. Okay. Ano pa ang pwedeng financial measure? Um, say for example, amount of bad debts. Dapat makolekta yan ng bad debts, 20,000 20, 20, lang, for example. So those are all financial measures, right? There could be non-financial measures related to sales. What are some non-financial measures with respect to sales? For example, a target, uh, target day's sales outstanding. No? So for example, ang allowed day sales outstanding lang 20 days for your accounts. Or for example, order time or delivery time. So for example, should be on time. Never late. Okay? So those are all non-financial measures. And in deciding no, which of these measures should be part of the performance measurement system, managers need to be selective when deciding on the appropriate mix of financial and non-financial measures. Kasi pag nilista mo yan lahat, hindi na magkaugaga yung iyong sales manager. Ano, lahat to kailangan kong gawin or kailangan kong uh, i-deliver. Right? You also have to guide your sales manager. Alin ba dito ang pinaka-importante for, for me, for us to, ha to, to attain the objectives of the organization. We can always argue, lahat yan mahalaga, no? pero kailangan mong bigyan ng weight. Kasi baka yung pinakamahalaga dyan, hindi yun ang bigyan ng focus ng sales manager. And how do you direct him na focus on the big things? Bibigyan mo ng weight. At yung higher the weight, yun yung mas mahalaga sa performance ng kumpanya. So for example, probably the sales target, 30% of your total performance. Kasi yan ang pinakamahalaga. Baka yung amount of bad debts, okay lang. Hindi masyadong malaki. No? Or baka wag na yung amount of bad debts, let's just have day sales outstanding. Okay? For example, 10% yan of total performance. And others. And there could be a whole array of listing with respect to performance management. Okay? So lahat yan, kailangang i-decide in the organization. How do, you, how do you select? How do you prioritize? Okay. And the principle lang is alin bang gusto mong i-focus ng empleyado? Then you put higher weights on that. Okay. So 
which measure should be included in a performance measurement system. So usually there are three criteria or criteria that we need to take into consideration. Number one, representational. Okay. So how well a measure captures goal congruent behavior in strategically important dimensions. Meaning, ito bang mini measure ko is critical for goal congruence, right? And it is important to the attainment of strategy. Okay? So I'm sure maraming activities ang contributory, no contributory to the attainment of goal congruent behavior or strategies of an organization. Kaya hindi lang yan usually yung tinitignan criteria. Pangalawang criteria is measurement systems. Can you actually measure? No, meron ka bang way for you to measure uh, those, those measures? No, meron ka bang way to capture the data for those measures? Okay. And lastly, can the user actually influence? Can the user uh, actually, um, can the user implement the activities that results to those measures? Okay, let's have an example. Isang usual sales related measure is customer satisfaction. Right? Of course, we want our customers to be happy. So that's an important criteria. So representational criterion, I'm sure check yan. Right? Because if customers are satisfied, they will continue to buy from you, right? And it encourages goal congruent behavior. So, ibig sabihin, your managers will now be, um, be more, um, I guess, be more conscious about being uh, friendly to customers, making sure that customers are happy, etc. So, pasok siya sa representation ng criterion. Okay? Measurement systems criterion. Okay? Um, can you actually measure customer satisfaction? In what way? So ito yung medyo mahirap gawin. Not, I'm not saying that it's impossible to do. There are ways to do it. For example, you commission a customer satisfaction survey every year or every quarter. No? So if you do that, then you're able to measure it. Pero magastos kasi you have to commission a study. No? Or you can just ask your salespeople, okay, um, you can just ask your salespeople, oh, ask nyo naman yung inyong mga customers magbigay ng feedback. Email sa manager ng sales, sa head ng department of sales, for example. Okay. Uh, while that's cheaper, but it will question the quality of data. Right? Siyempre, kung ikaw yung sales manager, ang i-ask mo magbigay ng comments about you, yung mga mababait ka or you have good relationships. So the quality of the data will be put into question even though it's cheaper to implement. So, kailangan mo rin tingnan, mami-measure ko ba talaga at worth it ba i-measure? Yun naman pala, for example, customer satisfaction is important but it is not the most important or not top three na most important factors in your business. Eh, baka hindi mo na dapat i-measure yan. No? Kasi, kasi hindi naman pala talaga uh, ganun kahalaga. And it's more expensive for us to actually measure it. Okay. Lastly, user criterion. Okay. Can the user implement this? Is it adapted to the attributes of the users? Users meaning kung sino ang mini measure. Of course, your salespeople should be, um, parang uh, salespeople should be trained, no, to be able to satisfy the customer, right? So kung minibigyan mo ng ample training, then walang kung ample training or frequent uh, mentoring, no, then walang problema sa user criterion. Problema yan, okay? problema yan, yung customer satisfaction na measure, problema yan if there is no program with respect to upgrading the customer centricity of your sales force. Right? Ibig sabihin, the users are not adapted to these attributes. So we cannot expect them no, to exhibit or to perform um, according to this measure. Kasi we're not giving them enough resources or enough training or enough um, ways to ensure that he will be successful. So those are the three criteria to measure or to determine whether measures should be included in a performance measurement system. Okay. Now, as mentioned, there are two types of 
uh, performance measures, financial measures, and non-financial measures. Okay. Uh, the traditional way to measure performance of, of people within an organization are based on financial measures. Okay. So financial measures, for example, revenues or cost of goods sold, cost per unit, profit, no net profit, or contribution margin. Those are all financial measures. And usually, these are the ones frequently used to measure performance of people within an organization. Why? Because it's unbiased. Numbers don't lie, right? On your revenue, that's it. On your COGS or cost per unit, that's it, no? It, there is a there is a set manage measurement system in place. May accounting system ka eh. It's easy to pull out those information, right? The user criterion, I mean, people in the organization know what they are and know what to do so that they can increase or reduce these items according to the target, okay? And representational, usually the strategies of the organization are linked to a financial goal. Kaya usually there are financial measures. However, there are pitfalls also when you use purely financial measures in performance management. Okay, so those pitfalls re uh, refers to the following. Number one, you know, the, the, pit, the pitfalls are linked to the management considerations involved in assigning financial responsibility to organizational subunits. We'll discuss that in the next slide. And next is the controllability principle. Okay, now although Financials are related to the performance of each department, but not all items are controllable. So it may hinder motivation within the organization. Managers should be measured against those items they can influence, even if they do not have total control over those items. Okay. Granted, no. Um, granted that not all managers in different levels of organizations will have control over the financials. No? However, they should have a reasonable ability to influence it. Okay? And I'll discuss that later. Okay? So if they're able to influence it, even though they cannot control it, then pwede pa rin yan, pasok pa rin yan sa motivational aspects of financial measures. Okay? So for example, one pitfall is what profit should we use? Okay, so for example, you're given this income statement. You, know? you are a manager. For example, you are a R&D manager, for example. Or wag r &D, marketing na lang. For example, you are a marketing manager in an organization. Okay, you're a marketing manager in an organization. And then, kailangan tapatan anong financial measure ang best for you. Okay? Right? So, if you look at the different, this, the different profitability measures, marami kang pwedeng tingnan. Right? Number one, you can look at it at the level of contribution margin. Okay? So, as you know, contribution margin is revenue, a minus variable costs to be more precise okay variable cost okay so revenues uh, sales minus variable cost gives a contribution margin okay kung i minus mo yung fixed expenses incurred in the profit center that's what you call direct profit in the in in the parlance of uh, parlance of uh, responsibility center accounting okay yung direct profit walang direct profits accounting but it's something that we can compute out of accounting information right so you can get revenues you can get variable costs you can get the fixed expenses that's directly attributable to the profit center right and from there you can get what's called direct profit okay then you've got what's called controllable profit. What's controllable profit? No, that's direct profit minus controllable corporate charges. There could be corporate charges that you have some control. So for example, um, 
For example, the corporate HQ charges accounting. Kasi for example, lahat ng accounting uh, accounting services nandoon sa headquarters. Okay? And then probably the HQ or this specific profit center, for example, uh, oh well, the HQ allocates the cost of accounting services to the different profit centers on the basis of number of transactions, number of accounting transactions. So parang gagawin nila, kunyari, in a year, ang cost ng accounting is 10 million pesos. Ang accounting department is 10 million pesos. At the end of the year, bibilangin nila how many transactions yung inasikaso nila for all different profit centers and then they'll, they'll allocate the cost. Okay? So kung 10 million rin yung number of transactions, so that's piso per transaction, then it's a charge yung piso per transaction sa different uh, accounting uh, different profit centers. So that's what you call controllable corporate charges because even though it's a corporate charge, but you but they have some some form of control over it, right? The control is they did umtian nila yung transactions. So kung mas konti yung transactions, controllable yung corporate charges. Right? You have some level of control as to how much corporate charges are allocated to the specific profit center. Once you minus that or deduct that, then you have controllable profit. And then there are other corporate allocations that you cannot control. Pag minus mo yun, de ibit na. No? And then pag minus mo pa yung taxes, net income na. Okay? So these are five levels of, of profitability, profitability measures that you can choose. No? Now, if you're the marketing manager, alin kaya dyan ang dapat sa'yo? Okay? Versus if you're the general manager of the profit center. Right? Magkaiba kayo ng scope eh. If you're the marketing manager, ang scope mo lang marketing. Right? So under marketing, ano kaya yung mga financial statement as uh, items that you have some level of control? Obviously, the marketing budget. You can control marketing budget. So that's nandito yan. Sa fixed expenses incurred. Right? Okay. What items can you influence? If you ask me, you should be able to influence sales. Right? If you're the marketing manager. Why? Why can you influence sales when you're the marketing manager? Isn't that the influence of the main influencer there is the uh, sales department? So I can argue if I'm your boss, na, oh, yung mga marketing collaterals mo, dapat nagre-result ng sales yan. If it's not resulting to sales, then your activity is not effective. So you have an influence over sales. You don't have any control on sales, but you should be able to influence it and contribute to it by providing good marketing uh, marketing notes or marketing collaterals or marketing execution. Right? And so I would say that you also influence sales. Okay? Of course, variable expenses, you don't influence it. Planta yan eh. Right? So you should so so therefore you have to make compromises. No? Sure na dapat let me change the color. Sure na dapat itong fixed expenses part ka dito eh yung marketing. So kailangan part ka diyan. Okay? And then yung revenue part ka rin diyan. Okay? Can you influence cost of sales? Ito yung medyo malabo, right? Okay? You cannot influence cost of sales so much because you don't have any clout over production. Okay? So, baka hindi rin appropriate yung direct profit para sa marketing manager. Pero hindi rin naman appropriate yung contribution margin. Okay? Kaya usually, what, do the, what does some companies do? Some companies, they create their own measure. So, for example, pwede kong sabihin na, oh, gawa tayo ng sarili nating profit measure for marketing. Tawagin natin siyang marketing contribution mar contribution margin for example pangal and invento ko lang yan pangalan na yan i mean that's not an official title but we can say na okay let's mag-invent tayo ng profit measure for marketing say tawagin nating marketing contribution margin where the formula is sales minus the marketing budget for example then ito dapat yung contribution ng marketing to the overall pnl of the organization Okay, so this makes marketing co-accountable to sales and they're accountable also to their own budget. Okay, 
So you can invent those kinds of measures so that you don't have the pitfall of assigning uh, items that are totally uncontrollable to different departments. Of course, for a general manager, okay, malamang hanggang controllable profit pwede mong i-assign sa kanya. Right? So the financial measure for the GM is controllable profit pero for the marketing manager, iba. For example, something we made up which is marketing contribution margin. Okay? So those are things that we can uh, or marketing value PNL contribution, right? Which is essentially just sales minus the marketing expenses, right? So, so yung what profit should we use? Actually, you are not, you are not um, parang beholden to the traditional profitability measures. You can invent your own if that will ensure goal congruent policies. Okay, so that's one discussion with respect to profit measures. Next is in terms of another profit measure is ROI versus RI. ROI is return on investment. RI is residual income. So you learned this already. So ROI is EBIT you know, over assets employed. You know, and the residual income is in earnings before interest and taxes minus the capital charge. What's the capital charge? The capital charge is computed as the cost of capital times the assets employed. Okay, yung ROI, madaling itindihin. I mean, you've been studying this for all your life. Okay, so yung RI, that's something that we'll study a little bit further. You know? So residual income, bakit siya sinawag na residual? Kasi it's siya yung excess income. No? Excess income of the company. Okay. Yung because, why, why is there excess income? The assets that the company or the division employ times the cost of capital essentially is the cost of asset use, right? So for example, you've got 1 million worth of assets and the cost of capital is 10%, which means the cost of the use of the asset is worth 100,000. But if you're earning, if your EBIT is say one twenty-five thousand, you're earning higher than the cost of the use of the asset. So the difference, which is twenty-five thousand, that is called the residual income or the excess income over the cost of assets employed. Okay. So that is very important. So a very critical input in residual income is the cost of capital, right? Because it dictates what is the cost of asset use, okay? So because of the difference in the treatment of ROI and RI, there are fundamental differences in decisions. You know, if you are looking at ROI or looking at RI. So we'll explore more of that later, okay? So what is return on investment? It's usually used because it's a comprehensive measure in that anything that affects financial statements is reflected in this ratio, right? It is a common denominator that may be applied to any organizational unit because all org units have profit, they have assets, right? And so madaling compute in. And it is something that's standard across different organizations. It's simple to calculate and understand, and it's easy to communicate internally. Okay. On the other hand, residual income, okay. no, there are three reasons related to achieving goal congruent behavior to use RI over ROI. Okay. Number one, all investment centers have the same profit objective for comparable investments okay. because of the use of cost of capital. Okay. Because you are using the cost of capital, the cost of capital is based on the cost no, of similar or comparable investments to the responsibility center that you're trying to measure or investment center that you're trying to measure. Okay, so for example, you have two investment centers. Let me change the color. You have two investment center, investment center A, investment center B. Investment center A, for example, is a utility. 
Investment Center B, for example, is a mining company. Okay. Okay. For ROI, the measure is EBIT over assets for both. So it's easy and easy to implement. Pero ang advantage ng RI, it will recognize a different cost of capital between two, the two. Okay. Right? A utility will have a lower cost of capital than mining. Right? And therefore, it makes sure that the decisions of the mining, the mining investment center is attuned no? with comparable investment in its sector. No? So for example, the cost of capital for utility might be 12%, but the cost of capital for mining, because it's much riskier, no? say it's 25%. Right? And because the capital cost of capital is different, the standard by which, in, by which new investments are evaluated are different because they have to hurdle a different cost of capital charge. Okay? I'll explain that later. Okay. With RI, decisions that increase the ROI may decrease its overall profits. So for example, a division, so the current ROI of the division is say 30%. To increase its ROI, what does it do? No? It disposes an asset whose ROI is 25%. So the overall, the current overall, um, the current overall ROI is 30%. The investment center head wants to increase ROI. What does it do? He disposes an asset where the ROI is 25%, which is lower than 30. So dahil nag-dispose siya ng isang low ROI asset, overall, okay, overall, the ROI will now be higher than 30%. Di ba? Kasi may isang laggard na tinanggal mo. Okay? So therefore, this disposal is appropriate when you look only at increasing ROI. Okay? However, if you look at residual income, if the cost of capital is, for example, 20%, Okay. Right? Then this disposal is not optimal. Right? Correct? Kasi that asset is still providing residual income to the organization. So dapat hindi dispose yan. Kasi meron pa siyang 5% spread. Right? And therefore should not be disposed. If you dispose that, residual income is, will actually decrease rather than increase. Okay? No? So therefore, the decision will be different if you're using residual income. Okay. Next is for residual income, different interest rates may be used for different types of assets. Okay. Uh, in reality, you can attribute the cost of capital to different assets. We call that marginal cost of capital. Kasi nung binili ko yung asset na to, ito yung cost of capital. Nung binili ko yung next set of assets, ito yung cost of capital. So you know the cost of capital per incremental investment. And that cost of capital is called the marginal cost of capital. And since you can attribute that, then you can compute for the RO, the RI for those different, um, different incremental investments uh, more precisely than just having one general cost of capital. Okay, So that's why residual income is superior versus ROI because you're able to track the, the interest rates or the cost of capital for these different types of assets that you acquired incrementally. Okay? Let's look at some numerical examples in the text you know, which illustrates this. So one, for example, you've got two investment centers, A and B, and the company as a whole. Okay? So if you look at investment center A, okay, right? ito yung assets employed niya, itong kanyang EBIT, okay? And if you compute the ROI between the two, okay? The ROI is 13% for investment A, okay? And 25% for investment B, okay? If you look at residual income, assuming their cost of capital is 10%, okay? So that's EBIT minus the capital charge. Capital charge is 10% times the asset employed, 55,400, okay? So, if you look at this, um, uh, 
So if you look at them separately, you know, uh, investment center A has a lower ROI, okay, and a lower residual income because of the EBIT and capital charge. If you look at the combined, the ROI is lower between the two, no, pero it increase, it, it, it is still higher in terms of residual income. Okay? So kung ikaw yung company as a whole and you're looking at ROI as a measure, you might be tempted to just divest investment center A. If you divest investment center A, then company as a whole equals investment center B. It will result into a higher ROI. Correct? However, it will result in a lower residual income if you reduce or if you divest investment center A. That's what we're trying to explain the previous, in the previous um, discussion. So therefore, ROI is not a good way of deciding which ones or uh, deciding investment decisions. You should look at residual income. Okay. Let's look at this problem. Okay. Ito naman, nagdagdag ng investment. Right? So, this is the current assets and the current EBIT of Investment Center A. Current EBIT and current investments of Investment Center B. Nag-invest in a new, may dinagdag, nag-expand. The expansion generated 42 of EBIT and 20,000 assets. No? So, if you combine the two, right, the combined ROI is 15%, dati 13%. And so therefore, what is your decision? The decision is yes, you proceed since the ROI increases. Okay. Okay, investment center B, okay, from 23.5, from 25%, yan yung current niyang uh, ROI, because of this new investment, it becomes 23.5. So the decision is no. Do not invest because it will decrease the ROI from 25 to 23.5. So you, if you look at ROI, ganun yung behavior, right? But if you look at RI, no, nag-increase yung RI from 1660 to 3860 for investment center A. So on this issue niya, yes, invest. Okay. And tumas din yung RI, right? Tumastin yung RI, 5,160 to 7,360. So if you look at RI, investment center B, I mean the investment should be approved by investment center B. Okay, so again, the ROI gives you a wrong result, wrong investment result. So that's why you should look at residual income. Okay. Of course, there are other ways to evaluate. You can do capital budgeting, right? You can do incremental analysis no but this is one way of presenting or looking at uh, decisions or investment decisions okay the point here is that roi is not a good measure no and it's not necessarily um it's not necessarily going to result in a goal congruent decision now because financial measures are not um not you should not it, it, they're not all encompassing. No, merong mga naiiwan na performance attributes if you're just looking at financial measures. That's why it's important for us to, to include non-financial measures in the performance measurement system. Okay? So financial measures are usually called lagging or historical measures. Kasi yung result ng financials, after na yan eh. After na na ma-implement ang strategy. That's also one this one uh, one constraint of financial measures. Kailangan mangyari muna, right? Then, tsaka mo marirecord kasi yung financial outcome. And tsaka mo may measure, oh, okay ba yung strategy natin or hindi. The problem is, uh, tapos na, nangyari na. There might be little time to adjust. So, non-financial measures, on the other hand, are intended to be leading indicators. Leading meaning bago tumaan yung, bago, bago pumasok yung financials, Ito na yung indicators of success. No? So for example, 
a leading indicator, for example, for salespeople is day sales outstanding, right? Another leading indicator is customer satisfaction, okay? So those are indicator. Uh, another leading indicator is uh, delivery on time, right? Of orders. Okay, kasi bago pa pumasok yung kita, that's something that can be can be used to predict outcomes. Okay. So relying on financial measures can be dysfunctional kasi pwedeng i-game yung measure. Pero pag meron kang financial measures along with non-financial measures, then you can properly define what kind of behavior, what kind of actions you want your managers mm -hmm. to implement. Okay. So what are some examples of non-financial measures? One are customer-oriented measures. So for example, market share, customer satisfaction, and retention, those are all non-financial measures. So if you see market shares increasing, then you should you, it is a leading indicator that you could probably expect better financial results. No? Second, business process-oriented measures such, that, such as on-time delivery, capacity utilization. You see, if your capacity is utilized 100%, it means probably that you, you're getting good business, right? Employee-oriented measures, for example, number of training hours completed per employee, employee retention, no? because uh, well-trained employees results in good results. Okay? Innovation and environment-oriented measures, such as number of new products or services launched or percentage of sales from new products or services. No? Those are other measures that are related to innovation, to new product development, na pwede rin integrate in performance measurement systems. Of course, these are integrated along with the strategy. No? So for example, if the strategy of an organization is uh, be, uh, be present in two countries, the strategy, for example, is internationalization. Okay? Uh, uh, two percent of the business or no. 20% of the business in five years should be from international sources, right? Ngayon mo palang umpisahan yun. Naturally, wala pang, net income, wala pang net income contribution yung international sales mo or international operations kasi ngayon ka pala nag-umpisa mag-internationalize. So what do you then do? Then probably you can put a non-financial measure for this year that your new product development or your business development team should be able to acquire a new company within the year. Right? So that's a non-financial measure that contributes to the overall strategy of having 20% uh, net income coming from abroad by, 20, by 2027, which is five years from now. Okay? So that's what I'm saying. Now, there could be non-financial measures that contribute to the attainment of overall goals. No? And those overall goals might be financial in nature. Pero kailangan lang may mangyaring non-financial so that it today, so that it results to a future financial outcome. Okay. What are the pitfalls naman of using non-financial measures? Of course, you have to validate the causal links between the non-financial measure and the strategy. Okay. Hindi pwedeng, hindi related yung non-financial measure sa strategy at the end of the day. So yung in-explain ko kanina, if the strategy is 20% of uh, sales should be from international sources in five years, no? And the uh, non-financial measure today is close one acquisition of a company this year. So obviously, there is a causal link. No? And you can directly trace the causal link of your non-financial measures to financial measures. Okay? Pero if you don't validate the causal link, then the manager might be confused as to why they are doing it. right? Or might not believe in strategy or in the performance measure because it is not related to overall strategy or simply there's goal incongruence, right? So validating the causal links is very important, okay? Pitfall number two, forgetting to consider the system support when choosing non-financial targets. System support meaning IT system or data management systems. Sabi ko nga kanina, non-financial measures should be, kailangan nare-record yan, nakikip track. If there's no way for us to keep track of it, then it's a useless measure. So that's another pitfall. So like customer satisfaction, that's the usual example. Okay? 
we know customer satisfaction is important, but it's difficult for us to have a, an IT system or data management system support you know, when we are trying to get um, data for customer satisfaction. We end up not doing it anyway. Hindi you know, sana yung efforts tapunta na lang sa ibang measure kung hindi naman talaga kayang i-fulfill or or i-keep track. Pitfall number three is not setting the right performance target. No? Na validate mo nga yung causal link, pero yun pala, masyado mababa yung target. No? Hindi mo alam what magnitude will result to an intended financial outcome. So dapat pag-aralan yung non-financial measures kung really it contributes to a financial outcome or to the outcome of a strategy. Okay? One general uh, framework for this combination between financial and non-financial measure is called the balanced scorecard. No? So it was developed in 1992 by Kaplan and Norton. Essentially, the balanced scorecard is a framework no, to develop performance measurement systems. And according to this framework, no, there are four perspectives with respect to financial and non-financial measures. There's the financial perspective, customer perspective, internal business perspective, and innovation and learning perspective. In other words, dapat daw in an organization, ang key performance measures nila ay related to all these four. Okay? So kung ikaw ay isang manager, dapat meron kang financial, financial measure, meron kang measure related to your customers, meron kang measure related to your internal business processes, at may measure ka with respect to learning, human resource enhancement in your organization. Okay? So, so financial perspective, how do we look to shareholders, meaning what are our financial commitments? No? Customer perspective, how do customers see us? How do we interact with customers? Internal business perspective is how, what must we, what must we excel at? What are the processes that we need to be, be excellent on? Right? What are those, those outputs that we need to make sure that we are doing uh, excellently internally? Innovation and learning, what kind of value adding um, innovation can we implement and how do we ensure that our people are uh, continuously improving? Okay? So it is uh, well balanced, right? Kaya nga siya balanced scorecard because it's, it, looks like, it looks at internal and external perspectives it looks at financial and development perspectives. Okay? So for example, you know, so when we talk about the balance scorecard, the center or the heart of the balance scorecard is the mission, goals, and strategies of an organization. I think these four perspectives should be able to, um, to capture you know, the mission, goals, and strategies of an organization. So at the end of the day, masyashoot yan dyan eh. Some goals are financial, some goals are customer related, some goals are business related, some goals are based on innovation and learning. Okay, So, for example, for the financial perspective, there are financial goals in an organization, say growth of net income, EPS, stock price, etc. There are success factors related to the financial aspect of things that will enable you to attain those financial goals. And we have to understand what performance measure no, should be attached so that those critical success factors succeed. No, it just gives us a, a, an organized, organized and complete or I guess all-encompassing way to look at performance. No? Kasi lahat ng departments magagamit yan. No? So obviously, for example, let's look at the finance department. The finance department has its own mission, goals, and strategies. It has financial targets, no? yung finance department. For example, Cost of capital could be a target or interest expense should be minimum, right? So those are all financial targets with respect to the CFO, for example, right? The CFO has internal business goals, right? Making sure that they're able to process transactions on time, process payments on time, or for example, um, file statutory reports to the Securities and Exchange Commission on time file tax payments on time. So those are all internal business perspectives, right? There could be strategic goals, for example, making sure that um, processes are automated. There could be critical successful factors with respect to automation, and there are measures with respect to automation. 
So for example, uh, implementing projects on time, implementing pro uh, automation projects on time, or making sure that the benefits of automation are translating in the, once implemented. You know, those are all internal business perspectives. From the point of view of finance, there's also a customer perspective. Sinong customer ng finance? Edi yung businesses, right? So for example, ang customer ng finance is, uh, uh, for example, billing. No? So dapat nabibill natin on time. Ang customer natin doon, sales. Okay? If you're finance, uh, for example, making sure that money or funding is available when needed. Sinong customer natin doon? Edi, for example, um, manufacturing. No? or the plant. Okay, if we need to borrow money, the funding should be available. This sh and it should not be a reason for delay of projects because there's no funding. Okay? In that case, there's a customer perspective also with respect to finance. There might be strategic goals, making sure that the cost of capital is down, etc. Okay, and there are critical success factors and performance measures tied to those critical success factors. Okay? And then innovation and learning in finance, no? If there are CPAs within the organization, we should ensure that they are up to date with respect to their licenses. So therefore, we help them to have trainings so that they can hurdle the CPD requirements, uh, assist them with respect to other uh, learning, uh, learning goals, right? What else in terms of innovation? Uh, projects with respect to improving work processes. Okay, so those are all part of innovation in the learning perspective. So it gives you a holistic view of the goals of an organization, okay? Now, the uh, balance scorecard is more than simply measuring financial and non-financial aspects of an organization, okay? It systematizes the various measures into a number of perspectives. Parang binibinga ka nga ng framework on how to, uh, how to look into it, okay? It also is the link between strategy and performance measurement. It is emphasized because the mission goals and strategies is the heart of the balance scorecard. So you should be able to um, identify or categorize those strategies into the four perspectives and identify the critical success factors for all four perspectives and attach significant or attach KPIs or measures with, with those on those um, uh, critical success factors. And lastly, we emphasize the idea of cause and effect relationship among measures in uh, the balance scorecard. Okay. Uh, we have to understand and realize that when you list down measures in the balance scorecard, some measures might, 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 might influence other measures. And that's what we should be also taking note in terms of the different perspectives. For example, okay. Of cost, uh, cost and effect relationships, for example. So manufacturing skills, for example, or yung technical skills of your employees. Okay? Pwedeng part yan ng perspective na innovation and learning. But improving the manufacturing skills or knowledge or technical skills of your people in the plant will definitely improve order cycle time. Right? So... By fulfilling your innovation and learning measures, it contributes to the attainment of internal business perspective because it will ensure that orders are on time. Okay. And when orders are on time, it also contribute to, contributes to the customer perspective because your customers are happy. Okay. And if your customers are happy, they'll be able to buy more. And so there could be sales growth or profit growth. And it contributes now to your financial perspective. Okay, so because you are forced to think in terms of different aspects of the business, it also the intended outcome is also for you to identify cause and effect relationships among different measures to ensure that they are helping each other or uh, sort of influencing each other in a positive way. Now, if there are any conflicts. No, with respect to the different perspectives, then that needs to be reconciled. Okay. Now, what are some problems or issues related to uh, implementing a balanced scorecard? Number one, top management commitment and employee involvement. Okay. Top management must be committed to make sure that all aspects of the of the all perspectives are given attention. Right. The problem is top management is usually focusing on financial perspectives and not on the others. 
but for balanced scorecard to be effective, you no, know, management should be able to also provide a balance from the top, you no, know, on which factors are critical in an organization. Okay, and employee involvement is also important because with this perspective, sometimes the employees know more about the tasks than top management, and so that and so therefore, the performance measures that we're imposing on them must be aligned with your employees. Second, the measures must be reviewed and results are, I mean, measures and results should be reviewed frequently. You know, the problem with some performance measurement systems is that it is set at the start of the year and then never monitored. They just monitor it at the end of the year. And so therefore, hindi na attain ng performance measurement systems yung kanilang intended outcomes, which is to be to provide feedback to management. And if it provides feedback to management, then strategies can be uh, readjusted tactics could be readjusted, which is essentially the essence of management control. No, uh, avoid measurement overload and reflect on the link to incentive system. So, uh, if there's a there's a balanced scorecard, there are four perspectives, and you might be forced to have a lot of measures because there are four perspectives, and so therefore there's also uh, some some uh, some importance. Importance should be uh, emphasized with respect to uh, prioritization and making sure that you are providing um, measures that are the most critical you know, for a manager to implement. Okay. That's it. Thank you.